Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. The east partition wall is in place. Now it's time to focus on getting the insulation in. I was gonna wait until I had the mini split completely, well, the pass through for the mini split, but it just doesn't make sense because I need the girts in place to get that all figured out. So what I'm gonna do is get the insulation in this entire bay in place, except for just a chunk right around where the flue goes through. That's gonna be wrapped in a ceramic blanket and then the area around it is gonna be filled with insulation. I'll do that right at the end. But the area where the mini split goes, I'll get that figured out once I have the insulation in and the girts in, I'll put in some bracing and then I can just cut a hole in the insulation, get that done and then patch up the insulation. I'm not gonna go into a bunch of detail on these insole hold strips or how to get the insulation in. I've already made a few videos on that and I'll link to it below. What I need to do is get that insulation in as quick as possible and with any luck, get these girts in today as well. Okay, one down, four to go. I have two full ones to go here and two partial ones to go here. And hopefully I have enough time to get these girts in today. That would be really nice. I'm not sure it's gonna happen though, but we'll give it a shot. All right, let's get the rest of this insulation in.
Okay, the insulation is done. Now for the girts. I have an index line there, and I made this story pole last year. This right here represents that index line, and you can see that it shows me exactly where my girts are gonna go. And the very bottom of it is where the bottom girt goes. The top girt goes flush up against the bottom of the truss there, so that one isn't marked. Unfortunately, this is marked, and I have this block of wood on it. I got the block of wood level, but over here, I think my mark must be behind this stud here. So what I gotta do is take this off and put my big Stabila plate level on here and adjust it up and down using this clamp until it's dead level and then mark it on that one. That should be the only one I gotta do like that, but we'll see when we get to the back wall. When I first started this, I spun a laser line and made that mark all the way around on every one of the posts, but we'll see if we can find them when we get to them. But for now, let's get this figured out. Okay, I needed to add this so it wouldn't fall off because this is so darn puffy, but we have it dead level. Now, I just need to push this up here and make a mark there and then take my story pole screw it to this stud and mark the location of the girts all right with my story pole screwed to the post all i got to do is take my framing square and mark the bottom of each of the girts Okay, all the girt locations are marked. The corner was a little interesting because I couldn't get the story pole into the corner, so I had to transfer the lines onto this, then put my story pole onto this stud here, and then mark them over, and then mark them onto here. Kind of interesting. All right, now what I do is on this center one, I put a block right on the line, but it has a catch on it so that I can put my girt into there and it's not gonna fall off. On the ends, it gets a different treatment. Right here, it'll get clamped to that one. And on this side, it's just gonna have a block. I'll push it down, screw it in, and we're done. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish this tonight or not. It's already getting late. And I have, what, six girts to cut? and I have to make those jigs again. The jigs from last year are gone, so we'll see how far we can get. Oh, and I have to measure each one. Because we have a fixed wall on that side and the end of a girt on this side, I gotta get an exact measurement and cut it just a smidge below that. So in order to measure from here, over to there, I'm gonna to have to screw a little block on here so I have something to catch on. And hopefully this insulation isn't gonna get in the way. We'll try one and find out. All right, show you what I was talking about. Got a little board screwed onto the end of that stud. And that allows me to get my tape a little bit away from the wall and come all the way to here. Quickly show you how I did this. On the ends here, we want the next girt to be flush with the girt that came before it. So I just put a board up against it, clamped that down, put a screw in it, 
And then when I put the girt on it, I clamp that girt down to it and the two girts will be dead in line with each other. This is the catch and all that is is a board and then it has one screw down here, a little bit of cardboard in here to make it splay out, another screw there. That way you can put the girt behind it, but the girt won't fall off. And then on the end, you just push it down and screw it in with your blocking below it. For the most part, that's how they're all done, except when you have a window like this, you can see that the girts extend past out to the window. And in that case, you just put your block right on the line and then clamp the board right to the block. Okay. Again, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to get done, but I should be able to get maybe two more done. We'll see. All right. The sun is getting real low and I'm getting real exhausted. The rest of these girts, I have three in and there's three left to do, but these last three, I have to go up and down a ladder. So I'm going to leave those for tomorrow. So in just a couple of seconds, it'll be tomorrow and we'll get this finished up. All right, it's the next day and I have the last three girts to go. And I was thinking about this last night. On these three, I screwed this block. Oh yeah, like that. And then hooked the tape measure over it and then pulled it over there to get the measurement. That is gonna be super hard as I work my way up. So, I'm going to give this thing a shot again. This is a laser measure and the problem I've had with this in the past is that you don't know what it's pointing at. So if I put this on the end of that girt right there and aimed it over here, if it hits anything in the way, it's going to give you a dimension to that. You don't know exactly where it's pointing. So. I'm going to try it, and if the dimension is much different than this girt right here, if it's off by like an inch or something, then I'll know the dimension is bad, and I'll figure out a way to get a tape measure. Well, I know how to do it. You got to hook it on there and then put a spring clamp on it, and you got to use two ladders. It's a real pain in the butt. I'd rather not do that. So let's give this little Stabila laser a chance. All right, that was very interesting. When I measured by putting this up against the girt and measuring over to this stud right here, I got 15 feet, there it is, 15 feet, 11 and 7 sixteenths, using the tape measure right from there to the stud over there, I got the exact same dimension. So I'm gonna do that for the other two. Just butt this up against the girt and measure over to that next stud. It should be plenty good. I'm going to take a sixteenth off the dimension anyway, so that should be plenty good. All right, that's one. Okay, we have 15 feet, 11 and 11 sixteenths. We're going to go with 15 feet, 11 and 5 eighths. That's two. And that's the third and final girt. With that done, I'm gonna reconfigure this scaffold and get the rest of these ceiling joists in place on this half. Then I can move a lot of this stuff over here, get the ceiling joists on that side, and I'll be really close to getting the ceiling on at that point. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.